Most of the time we use this segment of our video campaign to tell you of some problem and how we need to involve ourselves in solving the problem. Today, we're going to do something different and tell you how really wonderful our country is, even in the face of great unrest right now and the continued attempts to lock down our country. Our citizens can be property owners. Do you know how rare that is around the world? Yes, in most countries you can own property. However, it is very difficult to find property since land is not that available in foreign countries. The land is either part of generations of ownership or now owned by the state and unavailable. While the move is toward locking down land in this country from private ownership to the government in the name of the environment, nonetheless, land is still plentiful. We as Americans also take for granted the ability just to climb into our cars and go almost anywhere we please, when we please. In many lands, such freedom is denied to them since the manner in which they live is not conducive to owning a car. Gas is very expensive. Space to put a car is hard to come by. And many of the people live in apartments. You who live in New York know what I'm talking about. This is why city dwellers in many countries are in the city parks on the weekends. It is not easy for them to get out of town. To do so means they have to use public transportation. Yes, you see pictures of cars on the city streets in many countries, like China, to make you think that they all have cars, but not out in the countryside. China, for instance, ranks 77th in the ownership of cars per capita. The ratio of people versus the cars is not the same as the United States, except for countries such as San Marino, Monaco, and New Zealand. American businesses is another area that sets us apart from the rest of the world. Going into business in America is relatively easy, provided you have the funds to do so. While regulation is on the rise, in other countries it is next to impossible. While visiting Europe one year, I mused about going into business and living there for a few months each year and then coming home for the rest of the year. When I started to see the regulations involved, I quickly changed my mind. For one thing, I found I could not get a business license if my business was going to be competitive with any other business. The wages I would pay employees would be set by the government. I would have to set up a retirement program for the employees that would make them very well off in their retirement. If the business failed, I would not be able to close the business without certain requirements, including setting up a fund for the employees I laid off. There were other regulations as well. And this was considered a free country. That is a problem with many countries. Visiting them as a tourist, what you see makes you think that the people are free. Visiting them as a businessman looking to go into business gives you an entirely different perspective. Finally, looking at the country through the lens of politics, you realize that their systems are locked in at the top, and the voter doesn't stand a chance. Their political parties determine who can even run for office. A concerned citizen just can't say they want to run for office. They have to be part of the political party system and get their blessing or forget it. You have to be part of the system. We have been blessed with all manner of inventions. Over time, these have also become available to the citizens of foreign lands, but much of the creature comforts we take for granted began here in America. If not started here, they were developed here and became available for other people as a result of our ingenuity. Many people of great genius immigrated here and invented things which gave our people this wonderful life we now take for granted. They immigrated here because they knew they didn't have the freedom in their own countries to invent and then keep the fruits of their labor. Americans visiting other countries never really look past the facade of the tourist attractions to just see how controlled other people's lives are. They seem happy enough. It's only when you delve into, delve into the regulations affecting business and political action that you begin to see what is wrong provided that you have any experience in these areas to be able to see and notice compared to what we have here in America. Another thing, the wealth of America is astonishing compared to the rest of the world. 
It has come about due to the freedom that we have enjoyed. However, as rich as we are, contemplate just how rich we could have been if we were not burdened with all the taxes. If the government only operated within constitutional limits, we would be so very well off that it would be almost impossible to keep the rest of the world from migrating here. So many want to do so already that we've had to limit immigration. They want to enjoy the freedom and wealth we enjoy. The problem is that most immigrants do not really understand liberty and what it takes to preserve it. The tax burden of running government is not simply your wages, minus the taxes taken out, with your home take-home pay being left. You are also paying the taxes that are incurred throughout the process of manufacturing or growing what you purchase with your take-home pay. The chain of taxation on consumer products is mind-boggling. Let's look at the food you eat, starting at the farm. Keep in mind that the price you pay contains a portion of all the taxes incurred. The farmland is taxed. The animals are taxed. The machinery is taxed every year. The product produced is taxed. If it is grain, it is taxed at the elevator. The land at the elevator is taxed as well, and that fits into the price of the grain from there. The transportation from the elevator to the flour mill is taxed. At the weigh station along the highway, where the government weighs the trucks, they're taxed again. The process of grinding the grain is taxed. The transportation of the flour to the bakery is taxed. Maybe they go through the weigh station again and are taxed again. The production of baked, good is t- baked goods are taxed as well as their transportation to the grocery store. And the store is taxed. It gets exhausting, and I'm sure there are other taxes involved there that I'm not familiar with. I remember when the price of bread was 10 or 11 cents, believe it or not. Sure, we've had inflation, but the taxes have grown as well. You can say the same things for manufactured goods. In Europe, they have a value-added tax, or VAT, meaning that every time the product moves or changes hands, an automatic tax is added, which goes to the national government. We have a similar tax, or a similar process, rather, but not called a VAT, since the taxes are not distributed through the national government, but through various agencies and layers of government. Without these taxes, we would be so rich, it would make your head spin. Many of these taxes are used for government agencies whose whole job is to regulate you and tax you. That's their entire function. They produce nothing. Just consider the departments of energy, education, the war on poverty, the IRS, etc. Keep in mind that land, cars, industry, etc. are not regulated. They're inanimate objects. You can stand there all day and try and tell the land what it can or cannot do. It won't listen to you what a car can or cannot do, or a factory. They will not move. They will not hear. They are inanimate. The controls are on the people. The land use regulations, the building codes, the zoning, car licensing, smog tests, and on and on and on. Do as you're told, or you can't use your car, your house, or your land. This is socialism in a nutshell. The controls are on the people. Socialism is not a system of economics. It is a system of control on the people by a small clique, which has fooled the people into thinking that socialism is a system of the people. It's a sham. Once a nation goes into socialism, the freedom and prosperity of the country begins to atrophy. Socialist countries are so bad that we give them foreign aid every year from the coffers of free Americans so they can survive. We have such wealth that we have been able to do this for many generations masking the failures of socialism abroad. We are a great nation due to freedom, allowing our people to think and act without being tied down into a draconian system ruled by the few. What we're asking you to do is to look around and see the benefits of our freedom today and even in the light of increases of taxation and regulation and to tell others about it as well. We can reverse the trends here in America to less and less government and bring even greater freedom and prosperity to our country. Americans live better today than kings did 300 years ago, but we can do even better. Get people thinking about what a great country we have and that we have what we have to do to keep it and not turn it over to those whose desire it is to rule us in the name of the people. 
but seemed to get rich by being in public office. And speaking of the ballot box, get out and vote at the polls and get others to do likewise. Don't vote by mail. Your vote may land in a ditch somewhere. Until next time, we'll see you then.